What's going on everybody? Welcome back. And today I'm going to show you guys how to get an Indonesian IP address from anywhere. Now, as you can tell, I'm going to be using a VPN to do that because that's the really the best way of changing uh, your IP address reliably and quickly, especially if you're trying to bypass geo restrictions, trying to access maybe Netflix or maybe uh, foreign markets, foreign online markets to get discounts and such. So you can use ExpressVPN, which is a premium service, and you can also use Nord or Surfshark, which are also great VPNs, and I'll talk about them in just a little bit. If you're interested in any of those, you'll find links in the description down below to special deals and offers. Feel free to take advantage of those. So, as you can tell, I'm connected to South Korea, and it on what is my IP address, it shows that I'm in South Korea. So. What you want to do, and this is pretty standard in all VPNs, you want to go to your locations and you want to go to Asia Pacific and we're looking for, again, Indonesia. So we're going to click there and to confirm that it actually changed, we're going to look at my IP address here. What is my IP address? It should change the IP address. It should be different numbers and it should change the country. So I'm going to hit reload. There we go. So here we go. Uh, it's Indonesia, Jakarta uh, time zone. So we're good. That's pretty much how you change your IP address. And if you wanted to confirm it, that's how you can confirm it. Just go to a website to check. Um, but it, yeah, if you're using a great VPN like ExpressVPN anyways, you know, you don't really have to worry about confirming it every time, obviously, because uh, this is a pretty good service and very reliable. Now, Let's say you want to kind of understand your VPN a little bit more. Uh, you're new to VPNs. What are the options? What are the different options? What are they for? What, you know, why should I choose uh, automatic over, over lightweight or open VPN or whatever it is? Or what are these for? Let's get straight into it. First of all, the network lock. If you're living in a country with heavy censorship laws or restrictions, you might want to turn on the kill switch or the network lock here, right here. So what, what this will do is that if you didn't know, when you're connected to a VPN, you are actually connected to the VPN providers secured and encrypted servers. So what happens is that the moment you turn off your VPN, you will revert back to your ISP servers or your internet service provider servers, which are monitored and uh, they're going to share that information for sure if there's anything um, that you don't want shared, you want to keep the kill switch off, which will sever your internet connection the moment you turn your um, VPN off. So the only way for you to have internet access is by either completely shutting down your VPN and ending task, or if you actually connect to a uh, secured server, just connect to the VPN itself and you'll be in a secured server and the kill switch will kind of uh, uh, go away. So if I turn this on right here, stop all internet traffic if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly, this will make sure that the only time I have internet access is when I'm connected to the VPN and I'm secured. For protocols, and but these these th this feature is also available in Nord and uh, Surfshark. Um, I'll say that this is, you know, some exclusive, uh, if there's a feature that's only exclusive to the VPN that I'm talking about, I'll say that otherwise split tunneling, kill switch, and these protocols are also available in the other VPNs. Um, in terms of protocols, uh, Lightway is their own, ver expresses uh, own version of a WireGuard based protocol, which are supposed to be quicker. They're actually quicker to connect. So they're great for streaming. And um, they're great for mobile devices because they use less battery since they have less than a thousand lines of code. So that's great. If uh, you don't want to mess with any protocols, you can just go with automatic, which will give you great speeds as well. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. If you want to make sure you're always at the best um, kind of performance and security, you're going to use, you're going to want to use OpenVPN UDP, which is definitely the best combination of speed and security. TCP is pretty slow, so forget about that. ICAF2 is fast, but only works on a handful of server uh, servers or networks, so that's not very reliable. And L2TP is pretty outdated, so don't even mess with it. Now, this is an ExpressVPN exclusive. Only use ExpressVPN DNS servers while connected. This will force the ExpressVPN DNS onto your device, which will uh, help prevent leaks and uh, keep your performance 
uh, kind of in a tip top shape. So it's just sort of an uh, kind of like an extra security measure you can take. So uh, whatever you're doing really, uh, whether you're in a restrictive country or not, just keep this on at all times. It'll also make sure that, um, you know, it's sort of an extra layer of uh, obfuscation as well. And if you didn't know what obfuscation is, obfuscation will make it look like so that your uh, browsing data looks like any other browsing data so that your ISP won't even be able to tell that you're using a VPN in the first place. So that's really cool when it comes to ExpressVPN because um, in NordVPN, when you turn on your obfuscation, look at this, I have a bunch of servers to use here. But if I turn on my obfuscation here, I'll have fewer servers, much fewer servers to use. So yeah, that's that's one downside, I guess, if you're living in a country with um, heavy restrictions, I would just recommend that you go with VPN because it truly is, it, it's the best when it comes to uh, security. But if you want to secure one more device, unlike uh, Express, it secures up to five devices per uh, subscription. Nord will let you get six devices an extra feature here, which is the app kill switch, which will terminate or end task um, uh, for the selected applications here rather than your entire network. <coughs> and you get, you know, peer to peer on your onion over VPN, double VPN, which puts your connection through two uh, servers rather than one for extra security and the dedicated IP. So, yeah, you get a few couple of extra features. Uh, it's a pretty good VPN overall, but let's say you want to pay even less and you want to secure an unlimited amount of devices. This is when Surfshark comes in and Surfshark will let you, um, you're still going to get your features, your, your, your split tunneling, your kill switch and your WireGuard protocol, which is a great protocol. You get obfuscation with um, no borders mode and you can combine it with shadow socks. If you're living in a country with heavy restrictions, you still get static IP and multi hop, which is also a double VPN, but Obviously, the best feature about it is that you can secure an unlimited amount of devices with just one subscription. Maybe the only downside is that if you want to get that cheap price, you're going to have to commit to at least two years with NordVPN Surfshark, whereas ExpressVPN is only getting you to commit for one year. So, yeah, that's one thing to consider. So depending on what you're trying to do here, you know, if you just want something that gets the job done, you don't care about security, just go with uh, Surfshark. Um, you know, if you're kind of trying to find a medium with a couple of extra features, go with Nord. And if you're, look if you're looking for the tip top of performance and security, most of all, this is the most secure VPN you could get, and that'll be ExpressVPN. So if you're interested in any of these, make sure to check the description down below. Otherwise, um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to answer all of them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.